Yes, exactly. He was talking about anxiety and fear. And now we are going to talk to Dr. Mitra Korhamshadi from New York. Hello and welcome to program. Hello, good evening. Good Thanks for evening. having me for one more night. Pleasure to have. Thank you so much. So, uh, what's anxiety? What's fear? Interesting. Very, very um, deep question, actually. Uh, but we are going to we are going deeper. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> fear is associated with uh, some type of the uh, feeling and emotion that we are. Um, aware about the stimulus. Actually, there is an external stimulus and we do have the fear um, the feeling uh, towards that stimulus. Um, imagine that you do have um, fear of the spider, you do have the fear of the snake, you do have the fear of the height. So there is a type of you know external stimuli that you know cause the fear for the person. Um, but anxiety usually is associated with unknown causes. It means that you know there is a question mark. The, the person doesn't know that you know, what's going on, why she or he is anxious or worried, and you know she's trying to find out and figure that you know what's going on inside of me. That's why you know um, based on the definition, we do have the uh, external stimuli for the uh, fear and um, no uh, stimuli or uh, unknown stimuli for for the anxiety. So. Uh is it to is it good to have anxiety yes <laughs> nice question yes uh, basically um yes it's good to have, sorry uh, you said yes yes it, it's okay. good to have uh, you know uh, at the appropriate level uh, to have anxiety because anxiety is a type of you know um uh, a stimulus to uh, draw you on and you know, it's tr uh, trying to make you, uh, you know, uh, moving on to your towards your goals. If you do have a little bit of anxiety that makes you activated, functioning in the society, it's okay, it's good. You know, everybody has the anxiety. But what is very important is the level of the anxiety. If it is goes high, then we do have the different type of you know reaction. We do have the different type of you know behavior based on the anxiety, and sometimes we are dysfunctional. We cannot you know function in the society because the high level of the anxiety. We get uh, you know uh, 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 our heart is you know pounding. Our respiration is getting a little bit you know faster and faster. Sometimes you get a sweat, and you know um, you, you thought that your your uh, hands is shaking. There's a you know a little bit of a tremor, and uh, we do have a lot of you know patients comes to the emergency room just because of the um, a high anxiety. level of the anxiety that we call it as a panic attack. No, panic mm -hmm. attack is not good. That much level of anxiety is not good. But having a little bit of anxiety to start your day, and um, it, it it's look like you know spice of your day. Yes, it's good. Okay, I don't want it. Thank you so much. I prefer, <laughs> I prefer go with the fear is good, good, good enough. But anxiety, uh, I don't know. So anyhow, so and you said anxiety is okay, but level of anxiety. And now we are talking about you know uh, which part of brain get uh, activate when. Yeah, it's going to be related anxiety, to anxiety, yes. right? Right, right. When you do have the anxiety, the most important part of your brain um, get in, uh, activated is mesolimbic. And in mesolimbic, we do have the amygdala. Amygdala is a, you know, um, a very small um, uh, substance, actually, that uh, uh, triggered all of the pulses, impulses. Uh, uh, when we get uh, in uh, anxiety, when we are in the peer uh, uh, status, so that's why amygdala is the one um, to send all of the impulses and sending to all of part of you know your brain but the majority of the time uh, your frontal cortex or your prefrontal cor cortex is the one to receiving and absorbing and you know um, uh, 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 trying to modulating or trying to modifying all of these impulses just imagine that you know uh, hundred and hundred you know impulses coming in a nanosecond to your uh, prefrontal cortex but your prefrontal cortex is able to handle it, to modify it and translate all of the impulses. So basically, 
it's a work between the amygdal mesolimbic system and your uh, prefrontal cortex okay these three parts working together to get you know people get anxiety okay is it is it is it any way to you know doing something you know to don't get anxiety how we can uh, yes uh, but let me tell you a little bit because about, these you know, three parts is very complicated now so yes absolutely uh, basically your um, fear and anxiety is associated with the level of the survival you know uh, when um, you know get back to the beginning of the evolution yeah. Yeah. The people was you know a fear um, about uh, you know the external stimuli and external danger and threat right. to them so right. that's why you know um, uh, anxiety and fever um, hands to hands in the amygdala and the mesolimbic system but you know before um, answering your question I would like to um, give you a little bit of um, you know uh, neurotransmitter changes during the anxiety and the fear and um, you, you know that we do have a lot of you know, chemicals in, in our brain system, in, in central nervous system. Um, we do have the dopamine that, you know, associated with the achievement, with the aggression. And then uh, we do have the serotonin, which is associated with the level of the you know, anxiety, fear, and obsession. We do have the adrenal, which is, you know, kind of associated with the fear and anxiety. And in the level of the anxiety and depression, serotonin and adrenaline, or sometimes noradrenaline, level goes up and down, and then we do have a little bit of the uh, changes in the level of the, uh, these hormones. And we do have the um, oxytocin, which is the bounding hormone, which is the attachment hormone, which cause, we call it as a uh, you know, cuddling hormone. So we do have a lot of you know, hormones and transmitter, mm -hmm. and these transmitter, um, you know, uh, send this uh, uh, chemical impulses, uh, electrical impulses to the chemical impulses, and these chemical impulses cause the changes our uh, neurons uh, in, in our um, uh, CNS cells and then our behavior. And uh, what about the, uh, what are the symptoms of the anxiety? Very nice question, actually. Um, based on uh, your age the symptom is a little bit you know different different, we do have yeah. different, different type of you know anxiety symptoms in children and you know the majority of the children shows up with the somatic pain they do have the belly pain they do have the headache they do have the tooth pain um you know they are not going to go to school and they bring up a lot of excuses you know every single day mom is mm -hmm. trying to wake them up go um, uh, you know, let's start the day with the school and they do have the anxiety, they don't want to go to school. So mm -hmm. they bring up, you know, the um, uh, somatic pain and they are really truly, you know, honest about the pain. They do have the pain and you should, you know, consider their pain, um, uh, uh, first of all, as an organic pain. And then second, uh, we have to rule out all of the um, uh, psychiatry illnesses such as the anxiety that we are talking about right now. But when you get a little bit elder and elder, when you've grown up, um, your um, other symptoms will show up. You do have the feeling of weirdness. You don't feel okay. You do have the tremor. Sometimes you do have the palpitation. You do have your um, feeling that your heart is pounding too much and you know coming out of your chest. And you, you thought that your respiration is out of your control. And if all of these symptoms goes higher and higher and higher, sometimes we do have the panic attack. And you know. Uh, it, it would be very, very difficult and crucial for the patients uh, to breathe. And um, as, as a first step to, uh, uh, you know, decrease the level of the anxiety, we ask them to calm down, to deep breathe in, to just, you know, pay attention to the moment at this, uh, at, at this moment right now. So basically, a different sign and symptom uh, based on um, uh, the ages of the patients and people. Uh, do you mean if we we don't work on our anxiety, we're so gonna be higher and higher, and then we're gonna get panic attack, right? Yes, that is okay. correct. Yes. Uh, when was the first time we feel anxiety? Oh my goodness, it's gonna get back to many, many, uh, you know, years back when we maybe, are maybe that up. that day I born. <laughs> <laughs> And coming to the true. world, coming to the world. Oh my gosh, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> kind of is true because you know the time that you know we born to the, 
you know, um, uh, this work, actually, we um, find it out that um, there is a unity between us and our caregivers. So we cannot make a you know, separation from mm -hmm. us and our, you know, caregivers. Caregiver. By little by little, um, you know, uh, we, we get uh, figure it out and our brain get a little bit, you know, more mature. We can figure it out that there is a separation. I, as a me, as a self, I'm totally different from my caregiver. So that's why we uh, understand that, you know, if my caregiver is not around, who's going to, you know, respond to my needs? Who's going to take care of me? Who's going to, you know, um, uh, be able to um, suit me down when, when I need her or him? So I believe that, you know, um, when we are a little, um, you know, child, and uh, we understand that there is a separation between us and our primary caregiver. We do have the enough inside, the anxiety will show up. At that moment, uh, will anxiety um, develop? But you know, if you do have a very responsible caregiver to take care of you, to respond to your needs and your emotion and your um, needs at that moment, so uh, by seeing the face of your caregiver, by seeing the smile of your um, the caregiver, you will figure it out that, you know, uh, everything is okay and the world is not unsafe place. So the level of the anxiety will decrease in this group of the children. Hmm. Okay. So, and uh, how are performance affected uh, by anxiety? Interesting. Yes. Um, it's it's very obvious that you know uh, with the level of the anxiety our performance uh, goes down as you know that you know um, uh, on, a, on a test day um, maybe you do have enough knowledge to answer all of the questions when you are by yourself alone not in a test center but at the day that you have to be able to answer all of the tests in the limited time your anxiety goes to the roof and sometimes you do have uh, even though um, a good memory about your, um, you know, items and knowledge that you have to answer it, but um, you get hesitated, you get shaky, you are not uh, unable to focus. So basically, when the anxiety level goes up, our focus goes down. And when we do have the uh, little uh, level of the focus, our mistake will go up. So I believe that, you know, majority of the time, uh, people do the silly mistake under the uh, level of the anxiety and you know when the level of the anxiety goes up and you know amygdala sending a lot of you know pulses towards all of the parts of the brain prefrontal, uh, prefrontal cortex are unable to respond and modulate and monitor all of the impulses at the same time so basically your your prefrontal cortex which is associated with problem solving with planning with uh, logic is not going to work at that uh, you know uh, uh, time and uh, perfectly so yes based on uh, the level of the anxiety our performance goes down and what we can do for different level of anxiety the f lower level maybe we can you know get help with meditation and just mindful and you know uh, but uh, what about the different level of anxiety you bring up a very, very nice um, a point, actually, you know, um, uh, when we, when there is something as a, you know, sign and symptom for any type of, you know, um, medical issue, psychological issue, we should address it at the point that, you know, it's, it's a little bit. If you do have a headache and, you know, ignore it for a couple of days or weeks and you, you don't address it, what is the cause of this headache? This mm -hmm. headache goes chronic from the acute form goes to the chronic form. And believe it or not, you know, the majority of the time that, you know, uh, an issue is acute, we can address it very, very easily and in a, you know, um, low cost. But when the issue gets chronic, you know, you should go a lot of the work up, you have to do a lot of, you know, costs and, you know, uh, back and forth between the offices, um, uh, I mean, doctor offices to find out what's going on. So basically, um, the best thing is prevention, not at all get to that level to have any type of the issue. But if you do have the issue, headache, you know, stomach pain, anxiety, you know, whatever, we should address it at the, you know, um, uh, first step. But I want you to make sure that, you know, anxiety sometimes is associated to our um, uh, daily uh you know, uh, uh, the basic, the routine basic that we are doing. If you are uh, the one that, you know, getting up in the early morning with your, you know, empty stomach, 
uh, you are taking a cup of coffee and then at the you know 10 or 11 a.m again another you know drink a cup of coffee the level of the caffeine in your body is going to build up as a high level and this level of the caffeine causes the anxiety so sometimes you know we are making the anxiety in ourselves sometimes we are skipping the meal you know you are skipping the breakfast or you are skipping the lunch because you are busy at the time that working with the, um, you know uh, your uh, uh, daily uh, uh, work area mm -hmm. and then your blood sugar goes down and when your blood sugar goes down the same sign and symptom of the anxiety will develop you know you do have the you know palpitation you do have the head lightness you do have the you know um, tremor or sometimes you are you know uh, sweating because just your blood sugar is goes down so basically we should rule out all of the medical condition and the most important medical condition which is associated with the level of the anxiety and depression is our thyroid problem so we have to rule it out is the thyroid is working okay because the thyroid is a kind of you know factory that basically um, arrange the level of the fuel or uh, you know uh, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, you know energy that our body needed so if we are having the hypothyroidism which, which means that you know our thyroid working as a low level or we do have the hyperthyroidism which, may, which means that you know the thyroid is working too much we do have the different type of you know um, sign and symptom which could be uh, uh, moved from the depression to anxiety so basically yeah we have to rule out first of all the medical condition and back to the you know psychiatric condition uh how many level of anxiety we have i didn't get that we can say one two three or there is a how many level is um you you bring up a you know um a good uh, point actually we do have a, a you know scales um uh, we call it as a you know um, uh, inventory scales that you know we gave for any external stimuli in the mm -hmm. you know whole world we do have a number or we do have a score or we do have a point actually okay if you uh, if you lost someone um you know i mean um, in, in an accident we, we do have a level of their points which is very high if you do have a um, plan to move from one house to another house or one apartment to another ap apartment there is a point for the anxiety level or when you even do achieve something, when you you know um, get the uh, higher uh, rank in a position in a, in a, your in a daily work area, um, you get a lot of you know uh, uh, points because uh, it doesn't matter that you lose something or you gain something. There is a stimulus, and a stimuli comes to you as a new items, and your brain find it out as an unknown. I didn't have experience to touch it or you know uh, find it out what's going on. So. Uh, your your body your brain we find it as an unknown and unknown means that if you have the anxiety so basically if if your number goes high you know um, next year you will um, uh, understand that you know your your body is not working uh, as the same that you know previous year was working okay here is a, a little overlap between anxiety and stress uh, because you mentioned about something I feel about like a uh, moving to the new house right uh, for me there is no reason to have anxiety I have a plan based on plan I'm going and doing one by one everything maybe a little stress but still I can manage this, that stress there is not it's not a big deal for me so uh, but uh, what's the different uh, here anxiety make a stress or stress make anxiety obviously anxiety make a stress huh? am i correct that's a comedy uh, show doctor <laughs> no that's a good question actually it's okay uh, when we when we are saying anxiety make a stress that's a good question and i feel anxious or i do feeling of anxious and i feel a stress i believe that the first scenario is more uh, common and okay. more uh, you know prevalent between the people actually you have uh, uh, something outside that you know uh, you don't know what is this and you don't have enough information about it so you get anxious about it 
And you know, it, it's very obvious that there is a stressor outside, and this stressor caused the anxiety for you. So I believe that you know, when you do have for the um, you know next uh, or a first date that you are going for as a, as a teenage boy, um, you do have a lot of you know stress. You do have a lot of you know anxiety because you don't know what's going on as a first date. Who's uh, other side of the you know the table, or you know what is the communication goes on, and you know is she gonna like me or he's gonna, he's gonna like me or no, you know. So there is a you know a lot of question mark in your mind at that time. Basically, there is anxiety and stress hands to hands together. But I believe that you know it has to be an external stimuli first, and then we feel anxiety. Okay. Uh, and now I I know because most of the time I made a stress and anxiety for people. Anyhow, <laughs> so and now we learn stress is coming and making anxiety. So it's good to know. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Koram Shadi from New York, and uh, uh, hopefully to see you again very soon. Okay. Thank you. Be, be, Have a great night. Yeah, you too. Just relax. No stress. No anxiety. Fear is good because it's for your safety. <laughs> Have a good one. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Ciao.